this is Steven Saltzine. Thanks for coming back for more or less the 10 best albums I acquired in 2017. For more of a preview, go check out the previous B-side video. I've been drinking this Martinelli's Sparkling Cider. So good. Uh, some of the stuff I've saved up through the year until now to talk about. No, when it comes to fresh vinyl, if it's not completing a discography uh, with represses, I only try to get stuff I really want to listen to for the most part. So all my new records could potentially end up here. <laughs> um, so pretty much all these are new albums um, recorded for 2017. Uh, to start out, these first couple I talked about extensively in Salt TV 18. I'll show them here real quick, but go check out that video. So, Demon Hunter came out with a new album this year. This was the, uh, the variant that came out after the original release. And it was on a silver black double album. variant so you had the choice of that pretty cool cover and the silver black or basic black with this very cool album cover it's a real good album um, if you're into demon hunter melodic uh, metal it's a great album I just love that album cover. Obituary. Well, these guys came out with another album to follow up their huge return. Uh, this is 99% as good as that last one before this. They went all out on this with the uh, embossed cover. And I got this one on Black Smoke Swirl. Great album. Such a great album. Now, Ruby the Hatchet with Planetary Space Child. Once again, you can see a more full review on Salt TV 21 with some live footage which is definitely worth looking at. Well this was a fresh band to me from the Philly Jersey area. I'm only really into the psych resurgence and as far as it kind of leans more towards the deserty Caius or Fu Manchu side of things. They're more than just a, a cool mix of Fleetwood Mac and Black Sabbath. They're a, a great band, and you should go check them out. Get their stuff on uh, TP Records, on uh, Bandcamp. I really like this uh, Midnight Blue variant for the uh, Adam Burke art. Great, great album. Yeah, I went and saw them and signed. <laughs> Way Yes with tuna hair. Uh, this is probably the only real more obscure one I picked up this year. It was featured in an email I got from Sly Vinyl, as you can see down there. Uh, these guys are from Columbus, Ohio, and play a very percussive, acoustic, coffee house style of poppy folk, and mix it with some real heavy poetics. Uh, every variant was recorded on, or uh, was pressed on a different color of vinyl. I happened to get kind of a uh, clearish vomit color, which kind of I guess goes with the strange, strange co cover uh, this this album. Now what really grabbed me is this very strange juxtaposition of 
lilting positivity and strange quirkiness in the midst of dark subjects. With songs like Ready to Die, um, Get Dead, and Ideally, uh, where they, ideally where they contemplate, where do you think we go when we die? It's a great question. Uh, ideally, I'd say also, you know, well, he says, uh, ideally we don't die alone. And it is such a memorable, the way he says it, the way he sings it, and says it, it's just real memorable, real quirky, uh, contemplative. Uh, I'd say ideally, we don't die alone because we take some people with us to heaven. Uh, this is really, it's, it's not super long, uh, but it's a great, fun, fun listen. Kind of strange, but real fun to listen to. Way yes. <clears throat> Quicksand with interiors. Uh, with a song like Cosmonauts, you know they mean it. And it's a great reason to create a great album. It's not a sound that we haven't heard before with uh, Midwestern bands recorded by Steve Albini and uh, bands like Deftones or something like that. But it, this is what I really do like hearing more of. Uh, it sounds real fresh and just sounds great. Uh, two albums this year with some of the best music, yet kind of worst album covers. Um, the, this beats Thrice's. Um, uh, this album was kind of one of the biggest surprises of the year to me. Uh, they did go all out with uh, color on the inside, which rarely anyone ever does. Uh, I had to work real hard to get this this peach version. But I thought it's a great kind of contrast for the sound. It's kind of contrasty, but uh, yeah, it's a great release. Most all the songs are real good, so great album to listen to. Acceptance, Colliding by Design. Oh, after crafting one of the best albums to come out in the early 2000s, 2000, I believe. Uh, then disappearing, I wondered if they could pull it off again when I heard about this new album. Uh, I, I just love that album so much. Uh, yet to come back 12 years later, uh, I figured they must have something great to offer us, for us to hear. Um, well, with Aaron Sprinkle masterfully working the pan and sliders, and Rise Records, desiring to work with the band, and superb vinyl produced by the perfectionists at Pri Pi Pirates Press in the Czech Republic. There's definitely something good here. Um, I really did want to hear another Phantoms uh, album. And if you're also inclined to think the same, you might also be disappointed to know that they didn't. Uh, and even more that they smoothed off the edges of the past. Um, which you might would expect this many years later. Uh, as that music was pretty raw. Anyway. But what this did though was it opened up some space around the soaring vocal melodies. Lifting them to airy crescendos. Bringing the emotion to the arena of arena rock. Uh, I have to say. Um, it's a good thing. It's a huge sound. The more you listen, the more each song reaches deeper into your soul. Uh, this album reaches out to connect more broadly and deeply with the broader audience. It's a, it's a great album. Uh, definitely was pleased 
when I heard it. Uh, let's see. Black inserts, which are nice, they're not mine, but still nice touch. The kind of a maroon, dark maroon vinyl. Great album. So now if you're gonna do a, a kind of a, a plain nondescript design, sometimes I'm, I'm thinking it's because some of these bands like this, it's because it's the music that's important. And this kind of just points to it. It's not about the album cover, it's about the music. So I, I like to point that out, that you know, it's nice when they do have good design, and this is good design. Um, they don't all have to have paintings or anything. Um, this music, I don't necessarily expect it to. And uh, for sure, the music is, um, uh, I, I'd say spectacular. You're gonna, this is good listening in car music. Uh, arena rock. <laughs> it's, you know, I don't want to use some of the bands that that comes to mind, but because it kind of take away from that. It's just a huge sound. It's really powerful. Galactic Cowboys. Now, it's a long way back to the moon, but apparently it only takes 17 years. Once again, it was 2000 since their last album. Uh, and as hoped, um, it also sounds as good as you would hope. Uh, standouts are uh, Am, Is, Our, Was with its heartfelt singing, acknowledging the eternal in this world that's so obsessed with the temporary and the fleeting. Um, the title song, which reminds me of the early days of Galactic Cowboys and King's X. Um, this is kind of a mix of all of their music that they've done. Um, so it's a real good solid mix of, of everything you'd expect to hear from, from Black and Cowboys. Monster grooves and heaviness highlighted by cerebral humor. They demonstrate their ability to see things in proper perspective in songs like Leaving the Hype, which is uh, uh, kind of a um, what do you call that uh, humor? Uh, oh, you can never think. Can never think things when I'm off of my head uh, on camera. Uh, Self-deprecating humor, I guess you could call it. These these guys are some of the few bands that would be able to do something like that. Uh, some great packaging overall. I was a little bit surprised just because I've been getting so much colored vinyl um, that this didn't come out on a yellow or a purple or something. Um, maybe if they sold out instantly they might have made some red, white, and blue versions, some purple variants, whatever. But uh, I was kind of actually glad that this was just on black because uh, it gave me reason to just say just black vinyl like like metal is supposed to be, like music is, the record is supposed to be on black vinyl. So it's just fun to get the, the rare stuff, the short runs, that kind of stuff. Uh, black insert, black lined inserts, um, with some uh, paintings on each, each label custom, as you can see. Done by my neighbor Monte, the bass player here. Great, great album. Um, if you're wondering whether to get this or not, uh, you're wanting some new kind of uh, groovy thrash, or uh, wondering if this is going to be a good album, definitely, it's good. Great album. I like the matte kind of matte finish on there. Could have been glossy, but. They did the extra black and it just, I think it stands out with that matte finish. The Ruins of Beverest with the blazing gospel of Heinrich Kramer. 
Now, Alexander von Mellenwald returns with another epic as Ruins of Everest. Uh, this one as a dark gothic depiction of Heinrich Kramer, the German Catholic inquisitor who was instrumental in establishing the, uh, the witch trials of the late 1400s. Um, he's depicted on the cover here as actually being demonic himself in this painting by Axel Herman. The recommendations in his book Hammer of Witches, uh, which are, which you can see is uh, pressed on the cover of this inner sleeve. This is the cover of his, his kind of book, basically. Uh, they were deemed, uh, even by some of the church leadership, as unethical and illegal. Um, now, this album, uh, I was going to show you the, uh, some of it's also written on the, the uh, labels, custom labels. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, this album moves away from the harsh lo-fi uh, black metal and slows down at times, uh, allowing room for the 80-minute uh, story to ebb and flow between kind of the, the speed of Morbid Angel to the daunting doom of Cathedral. Um, this was one of the top metal purchases of the year. Uh, based upon having so many aspects covered overall. The beautiful vinyl, as you saw, uh, my favorite color blue. Of course, I can't read any of that. Might be interesting, but I'm sure you could find that if you really wanted to read that crazy stuff back in the 1400s, probably in German. I don't know if it's been printed in English or anything, but uh, anyway, great pre great packaging, uh, interesting topic and uh, for metal uh, to go back and this type of a concept. Uh, great release on 20 bucks spin, uh, don't know what other label this is, but you can get it on 20 bucks spin. Uh, so, real cool stuff. Um, if you're into kind of more strange, kind of black metal, gothic, it's not really gothic, but kind of sort of gothic. Train Dodge, Time Will Never Know Your Name. Um, I listened to this and the Nothing album all summer. And for most of the year, it was gonna be my number one album of the year. I had it all year, because technically it came out in December of 2016, uh, but really at the beginning, right? At the beginning of 2017. Um, so I've been holding on to it all year. In Salt TV 19, I reviewed two of their previous albums, so go check that out for more on their sound. But here's two LPs of pummeling, mathy uh, post-rock. I kind of like to call this emo, like the original, but that's so gotten so lost and uh, people weren't around when this started. That you know. so anyway, I just guess we can call it post-rock, whatever. Um, I really like Jason's aggressive, natural voice. Um, it's backed by a punk aggression. Then at times, uh, uh, electronic infused ambient moments and ballads. Um, check them out yourself on Bandcamp uh, and see for yourself what this sounds like. It's, uh, it's just great rock, real aggressive, aggressive rock. Uh, <clears throat> and 
now this is definitely uh, one of my favorite colors I've, I've got this uh, kind of highlighter pinkish orange highlighter clear vinyl uh, next to my you know favorite blue LPs this is one of the coolest colors you can get uh, one thing that could have pushed this um, further to the top of the list being a double album is it would have been cool if it were a gatefold with you know the lyrics in the middle and the you know, photo going across the middle of the center uh, but you know I don't know it just really would have would have pushed it over the over the top uh, nevertheless very it, it is really cool uh, it's a little thicker so they fit in there fine great album great 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 album as they all are right they're all great albums monolord with rust and when i first heard and saw this album i thought for sure it would take the number one spot of the year now by the end of the year some great contenders did show up but there's a good reason i paid 65 dollars for this variant um, mind you this wasn't the more expensive leather and uh, denim variants uh, I didn't get those because I I never saw photos of them and I really wanted to make sure I got this cover um, I'm sure that would have been cooler it's the kind of thing I like to get I think I would, either one of those would have been cool uh, of course the leather would have been the best one right now I don't think it was more expensive um, but anyway uh, maybe I'll pick that up some I don't know. Um, but this is the the tour edition and since they didn't come around here I had to find somebody willing to give up their rust variant now for you see you take metal you add some salt and you end up with rust. Now rust turns to soil and when God waters the soil up springs life, a new creation, right? <laughs> you see here at Salt Zine we're all about the rock and the roll. <laughs> now aesthetics and metaphors may get the album out of the record rack uh, but it's the tunes that get it on the turntable now these lines from the song dear lucifer is some of the most sabbathy lyrics uh, i've heard in quite some time where he says uh, dear lucifer i'm sad to say i must go dear lucifer i don't believe anymore Whoa. Uh, instead, what we've got here is some serious fuzz worship. Uh, rising up like a massive redwood, squarely between the doom and the desert rock. And uh, side C and D uh, do each have long epics, filling up a good part of each side, yet I'd say it uh, required two hefty slabs of vinyl because their riffs and their grooves are so huge. <laughs> Coming out in September, Monolord produced a great birthday present for me. Such a fun, fun listen. Genius. Eternal rituals for the creation of light. Accretion, the accumulation of particles into a massive object. I love science. And I'll put a link, actually, to a great website on quantum physics below, if I remember. Well, this is really the album that put all this whole thing off. 
uh, so late. I couldn't find the great looking red variant, so I got the yellow one. And then at the last minute, I came across this cool black smoke uh, special edition. Uh, in I'm mentioning this one last because it just edges past all the rest since it touches on most of the things I'm personally looking for in an album. In the audio, there's plenty of melody, um, including some to sing or I'm along to. Uh, there's waves of epic ambience and it's all backed with some massive heaviness. It's meant to lift your spirits to a higher plane. And Junius reaches higher with their art. And art is all about following the lead of the designer of all, after all. And that's huge. Uh, to go with the design and creating music, they had Drew Special also designed some impressive packaging. Now, I'm not sure if it's my favorite cover art this year, but the overall design edges it past the others. So, let's check it out. And try not to ruin it. I could do this a lot faster, probably. Time wasters in videos. I like to keep the tags on the front. I'll probably attach it to a new cover. So, anyway. I know what it takes to create this die cut for these and uh, so I, I like it when people go that extra mile for design. Now I do tend to be very linear in my art so I do like this a lot actually. This gold gold print. I don't know that that's a fifth color. Uh, I think it is actually on here. I don't think that's a fourth color. I think it's a fifth color. If you know what I mean. I do tend to be very linear in my own art, so I do like this. Um, this album is about spiritual transcendence, and what this art brings to mind is the feeling of looking up into a a big magnificent cathedral acknowledging God is the creator of all and humbly praying that the world find unity for one another and his love and truth yeah heavy like this album uh, of course this is my interpretation uh, yet that's the beauty of a lot of art of course it's white but Whatever, now it get replaced. A little bit hard to tell, probably. But yeah, it's nice. A nice dark smoke goes with that quite well, I thought. Anyway, I do appreciate art that seems to point to and glorifies God, and, and uh, this album does it for me. There you have it, my top 20 albums of 2017. Now let me know your top albums of the year in the comments below. Uh, subscribe, send me a link to your VC vids. 
Now, go out there and use what God gave you to do something cool this year. This is Steve with Salt Zine. Right on. Right on.